Hello and welcome back to another Bible study with the Feet My Sheep Foundation Bible study video channel. Today we are continuing our Bible study in the book of Jeremiah. We are on the 10th chapter today. And we're just going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, as we keep in mind uh, during our Bible study reading that uh, God is speaking to Jeremiah and he is telling them, He's telling him about how rebellious the house of Israel is and how his heart feels about this rebellion that they have uh, went on into. And then also, we must also keep in mind that even though he talks to him about Israel, it doesn't seem like it's like the same moment in time. Like it's a continual, like an hour or two hours or three days uh judgment he's talking to him about but it seems like and this is how it appears to the uh, reading of the of the book that it seems like on different occasions he's talking to him about the rebellion of, of uh, the house of Israel and so uh, and he has recorded it okay and so now it's a part of the word of God in a book that was recorded with his recordings Jeremiah the prophet Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get back into it, where he begins with, Hear the word which the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. And he says, Thus says the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. They don't understand whenever God uh, is giving signs from heaven. Uh, a lot of people... Just like I saw today on the news, there was a tornado in a certain region, and they said, well, Mother Nature. Well, no, God is uh, Mother Nature, and, you know, that's God's judgment upon a place. It wasn't about Mother Nature. It was about God allowing, because that's the way we have to also look at it, too. If there's a lot of damage being done, if there are people, unfortunately, uh, being removed from off the face of the earth, then uh, it's a move and an act of God, in which everything really that occurs on earth is, okay? Uh, I, because if he doesn't allow it, then, uh, you know, he doesn't allow it. So uh, now even though there are, of course, many things that the enemy has done, but again, we still have to keep that in the back of our mind. Why does God even allow it? Why, you know, and question him and, you know, get the answer? Because it may just be for his glory, because, you know, there are many instances where he allows certain things to happen to the children of Israel. Just like with the hardening of Pharaoh's heart at one point in time before he actually delivered them totally and completely out of his hands. He allowed that. But then he said that he allowed it only for him to get glory from it. For the acts that he committed against Pharaoh and showing his power, his strength, his miraculousness to the earth. Okay, because now we, all, we know all about it through by the experience and how he parted the Red Sea, we know that he can do the supernatural. Now, had he never had that experience where he allowed Pharaoh's heart to be so hard where he had to actually show up and show out, then we would never really know about the supernatural, miraculous power of God, okay? And I do believe that that's recorded all throughout the Word of God just for that particular reason, for us to have faith and know that God is capable, he's able to do that which man cannot do and even much more and abund abundantly of it far above all of the above that, uh, you know, he can do it. Okay, so going on, he begins to continue say, saying to uh, the house of Israel, for the custom of the people are vain. For one cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of his hands of the workmen with the axe. He's getting ready to go into how they actually create their gods, making them from their own hands. And they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it will not move. And they place it upright as a palm tree, but it speaks not. And they must needs be born. It can't be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. And that is what he is saying about these gods that they have made with their hands from trees. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, none, nobody like you, O Lord, for thou art great and thy name is great and mighty. Again, now, Jeremiah, from going into talking about the things that uh, 
God explained to him the different idols that they have made from trees. Then uh, Jeremiah goes into conversation because they go back and forth. And that's why I like to try to explain it because you can't get confused if you uh, don't catch it. You know, you definitely have to have discernment from the Heavenly Father. And we definitely need that at all times when we start to read the Word of God. So he says in verse 6, this is Jeremiah, For as much as there is none like unto you, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is, is great and mighty. Who would not fear thee, O King of nations? For to you does it pertain. For as much as among all the wise men of the nations, and in all the, their kingdoms, there is none like unto you. So we know that's Jeremiah, because again, the conversation is either God or Jeremiah speaking. And then it's about uh, mostly Jeremiah speaking, giving praise, admiration, respect, and reverence to God. Or he might go into prayer, petition, and asking God to remember mercy, have mercy, uh, and, you know, things of that nature, praying on behalf of the children of Israel. So then verse 8 goes on to say, but they are altogether brutish and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanities, okay? That's what he says about them because they're being foolish and uh, they become a stock, uh, a doctrine. The, the stock is a doctrine of vanities. The, what they have created is part of vanity, their doctrines is. He says, silver spread into plates is brought from Tarshish and gold from Euphrates, the work of the workman and of the hands of the founder. Blue and purple is their color. For they are all work of cunning men. But the Lord, now that's him at going, finishing, explaining what type of men have actually created these type of gods, okay? Cunning men. The work of cunning, that's the type of men they are. And so then verse 10, Jeremiah goes back into talking about God. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble, and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. For thus shall you say to them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. So that's telling us right there, you know, how all these other gods created, and even those that worship angels or deities from heaven. You know, God, he, he, you know, he made the heavens and the earth, and he, he could make them perish just as any other made up God from, from man's hand also. Now, nevertheless, because they're already part of his kingdom, he won't make them perish to go away forever because they're already in life for living forever. But he can make their hand of what they're doing and allowing those to worship. He can stop that. So verse 12 says, he has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom. And he has stretched out the heavens by his discretion. When he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. And he caused the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings with rain and brings forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood and there is no breath in them. That's just speaking of the idol. And again, this is Jeremiah. You can tell whenever Jeremiah begins to speak or God is speaking to Jeremiah and uh, as you continue to read into it and you know read more and further into it, each chapter you'll be able to uh, discern the difference more easier than when we first start okay uh, verse 15 it says they are vanity and the work of errors in the time of their visitation they shall perish the portion of Jacob is not like them see how Jeremiah is just trying to uh, fill God's, God's heart with some type of uh, encouragement in the people that he's chosen because he's very discouraged by their behavior, of course, as he, you know, we read in the word here. So he says, the portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the form of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance, for the Lord of hosts is his name. So gather up thy wares out of the land, O inhabitant of the fortress. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will sing out of the inhabitants of the land at this once, and will distress them that they may find it so. But woe is me for my heart. My wound is grievous. But I said, Truly, this is a grief, and I must bear it. Now this is God's heart. 
saying that, woe is me. Okay, then he goes into saying, my tabernacle is spoiled and all my cords are broken. My children are going forth of me and they are not. There is none to stretch forth my tent anymore and to set up my curtains. Because everyone has started to serve another God. For the pastors are become brutish and have not sought the Lord. Therefore, they shall not prosper and all their flocks shall be scattered. And behold, the noise of the brute is come and a great commotion out of the north country to make the cities of Judah desolate and a den of dragons. O Lord, now this is Jeremiah goes back. He starts again. He says, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. For it is not in man that walks to direct his steps. So, O Lord, correct me, but with judgment, not in thy anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. Pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know you not, and upon the families that call not on your name. For they have eaten up Jacob as Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel, all including Judah, for they have eaten up and devoured him and consumed him. And have made his habitation desolate. Okay. So that's what has happened to the children of Israel. And Jeremiah begins to pray this prayer from verses 23 to 25. Petitioning God uh, on behalf of them and himself. Because he doesn't want to be a part of any of the judgment either. Because he says, correct me, O Lord, but with judgment. And not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. But, okay, in, in, in the fact that he's asking the Lord to judge him, okay, bring justice for him. Because, again, if you're walking in the will of God, then God's judgment would be justice for you. Because if you're walking in the will of God, no doubt you're, you're dealing with persecution. You're dealing with uh, the enemy trying to stop your way of going forward. You're dealing with all types of opposition because you're walking in the will of God. So therefore, the judgment that you would be placed with whenever judgment goes forward with those that are rebellious would be totally different because your just judgment would be justice because God would have to be in position to vindicate you against those that are trying to stop you from going forward in his will. But to those that are walking in rebellion, God's judgment will look like wrath because they're walking in opposition they become like those people that are walking in opposition to the individual that's in the kingdom walking in his will. And they may sometimes even be a part of those type of people, <laughs> depending upon where you at, what you're doing and what your will, the will of God is in your life. So again, there's two types. There's that's the way judgment goes forward, you know, for the, for God from his throne room. It's either for those who are in his will or either for those out of his will, out of his will, walking in re rebellion. You've defiled your garment, um, not even having any uh, remorse for the fact that you have defiled it. Uh, and walk in pride because of, and, and as you defile, and as you walk uh, away from his will in opposition. All of those would, uh, those type of individuals, those, those, because you can be saints also. Okay, because we're talking about the house of Israel, his house, his house of the Lord. So those that would be walking in rebellion, just as God speaks of in the book of Jeremiah, all the way up to this chapter, the house of Israel, the house of Judah, they're walking in opposition to God. So God's judgment is going to be pretty much different from what the judgment for Jeremiah would be, because Jeremiah is obviously walking in God's will because he's speaking back and forth with him, okay? God can't speak to someone who's walking in rebellion. Now, you may be hearing from somebody, but it's not going to be God because <laughs> the first thing that he's going to do is want to get you back into alignment so that you can very well hear from him because at the moment you've been birthed into the kingdom and you begin to walk in rebellion, you be, you'll begin to walk outside of the kingdom, then you become a divided house, okay? You're no longer the house of the Lord. You're the house of the Lord and some other house also. So, and just as the Heavenly Father says, um, you, can, you can't serve two masters. You know, either heaven, the Heavenly Father is going to be your master or it's only going to be the enemy that's going to be your master, but it's going to be the one or the other. And once you've been birthed into the kingdom, it's supposed to be the Heavenly Father, the God of 
the holy God of heaven. That's supposed to be your master. But if you begin to walk, uh, somehow be deceived or begin to serve another God or walk in a different direction, which places you in opposition and rebellion to God, then therefore um, the, re the judgment would look like the type of judgment that we're reading about. That person will receive that. But again, it would be different from the person that's walking in his will, like Jeremiah, because Jeremiah and him are having a conversation. So Jeremiah and that individual walking in his will would receive justice from God, which would receive vindication, would receive uh, him, God, dealing with that particular person's enemies, uh, God moving mightily on behalf of that individual because they're walking in his will. They're not walking in opposition to him or his will. I want to make that clear and uh, as we can, so that we can be clear on God's judgment. As we continue to go forward, reading in the book of Jeremiah, looking at prophetic ministries and mainly those, okay, because of course the whole prophet, prophetic ministry consists of uh, God speaking back and forth with that individual or God using that individual's life prophetically. Okay, to, to bring forth the message of the future, what may happen from God, okay, from the future, because it's him speaking to, you know, to through an individual or to an individual on behalf of what he wants to relay to those particular people, okay? All right, so that is going to conclude our Bible study for today in Jeremiah chapter 10. God bless you. God be with you. And I will see you as we continue to go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study Channel. I'll see you on our next Bible Study video.